and welcome back. Now, if you cast your minds back uh, a few weeks, we were talking about a dual-digit display for Arduino projects so we can display error messages. For example, if this were now a proper Arduino project and it had stopped with the code 42, how do the digits get displayed on here anyway? Let's have a talk about shift registers. And don't go away, it's far, far simpler than what you might think. I want to give a big shout out to PCB Way, PCB prototype the easy way. Now, first of all, there's a little bit of admin. Note that the PCB Way factories are closed between the 1st and the 3rd of October 2022. All right, so put your orders in ahead of time. More interestingly, though, is that they're starting their PCB Way 5th PCB design contest. Yes, we can get a free Pico just for entering. Let's see what that means for us. As you can see, they've got a huge website all about this. So let's scroll down and see what we can find. So for the timeline, the project design runs from the 1st of September to the 31st of December 2022. Then they'll be reviewed throughout January. All right, and the result will be on the 6th of February 2023. And that time will whiz around sooner than you can think. So get your project in quick. Now, what are the themes? Now, there are two specific themes here. There's one for next generation hardware, home automation, wearable stuff, or uh, earth friendly, so eco type projects. And if your project doesn't fit into either of those, there's the free theme where um, you can do whatever you like. The first prize is $1,500 in cash plus a $200 coupon. I'll let you read those in your own time. So if you need some inspiration as to what sort of project you can submit, have a look at the submissions bit of this page and uh, just see the high quality of projects already submitted. And uh, make sure you get your project in. Remember, it's got to be in by the end of December 2022. Good luck with that and let's hope you win. PCB way, always worth a look. Go and have a look now. Yes, indeed. Now, 8-bit shift registers. It sounds, it's one of those things you must drop into your party conversation next time round, yeah? Because it sounds ultra-technical, but in fact, it's simplicity itself. Okay, so we've got um, controlling this LED display here, this dual LED display, a shift register on the back of it. Here, look, I've got one here. All right, now, so this is a dual 8 segment uh well seven segment plus a decimal place uh, led dual one and it's only dual because we've got two chips controlling it and the chip controlling it is an 8-bit shift register in this case it's a 74 hc 595 exactly the same as what i'm using in my project yeah and i've built one just like this except much much smaller uh, yeah all right i'll show you so this is my one, still on um, a rather large PCB because I've panelised the board. But they're my little tiny LED displays there. And on the back, would you believe, oh look, we've got two shift registers. Exactly the same as the other one. Yeah. So uh, yeah, we'll talk about this very briefly. I don't know if we've got time in this video, but uh, I thought I'd use a bigger version because it makes it easier to figure out what's going on. Now, the clue, first of all, is that on the top of this... PCB that I'm holding that I didn't make. Now, this is a commercial product. You see, you've got arrows and it says LED1, LED2, and that's quite significant. But we're just going to talk about that LED there, that seven segment LED, right? We'll ignore the second one for now. We'll come on to it, but let's not get bogged down. Now, seven segment LEDs are always, but always, numbered, if you like, or labelled in exactly the same way regarding the actual segment names. Starting at the top, you've got A, A at the top, and then in a clockwise fashion, it goes A, B, C, D, E, F, G in the middle, and decimal point as H, or sometimes X, or DP, or whatever. After all, these are LEDs at the end of the day, arranged in this circular manner to make it look like a big digit so we can see stuff and display stuff. All very nice, but at the end of the day, they're just LEDs and have no intrinsic meaning to the program running it. Uh, which is why, of course, the shift register on the back makes things so much easier. So how does this shift register work? Now, these eight segments on this LED, that's including the decimal point, would normally require eight lines from your Arduino at the back. And indeed, that last project's 
demo that I did required just that, but that's that's far too many. And of course, if we've got two digits, I mean, how are we going to manage that? So what this shift register allows us to do is just use three wires and then to say we're going to send data serially down the wires, okay? Send serially data to A, B, C, D, and so on, all right? Every bit indicates whether any one particular segment in order should be on or off. So if we were to send the first bit as on, that A segment at the top would light up. And then if we were to send another bit through, what happens then? How does the shift register work? Well, it says, well, I've already got something in this bit here. I'm going to move whatever's in here round, shift it round by one to here, and accept the new bit and put it into A. So B will contain what A had, and A will contain the new one. Similarly, we'll send another third bit down the wire, and it goes, well, I've got something in B, so I'll move that to C, A to B, and then the new bit will go into A. And so it shifts the things round until all eight bits have been accepted. How does that help us, really, though, in, in deciding, well, how do we get 42, for example, displayed up here? Well, if we want to display the number four, we have to work out which bits have to be set on that incoming stream of bits. So here's the number four marked out on this display. And you can see that for that digit to be displayed, we need segments B, C, F, and G to be lit up. All right? D, E, A, and the decimal point. No, we don't want them lit up at all. So the stream of bits coming in to this device, the 748C595 8-bit shift register, is going to have to look like this. A, no, we don't want anything lit up. B, C, yes, we want those two lit up, thank you. D and E, no. F and G, yes, we do. And then H, decimal point, no, we don't. Although it hardly makes any difference, does it? So that's the stream of bits that we would expect coming into here. And all the, the bit shift register does is as it receives one bit after another, it shifts them along one position. And therefore, where we've connected the LED up, it will move that particular value around. It just shifts them along. So we've we've worked out now, we go, look, to, to display a 4, we need to send it this sequence of bits. Now remember, we want A to be 0, finally, and H to be 0, but the other bits in, in between we want to be set. But in which order are we accepting these then? Well, we're going to have to send these least significant bit first. What? What? Come on, Ralph, explain what you're saying. OK, well, rather than sending it from this end, we don't send 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0. No, no, that would be the wrong way. We want to send it from this end because we want H to go here in the last position and we want G to go into second last position here. So what we do, we send it from this end upwards. So we're going to send this backwards, effectively. We're going to say... 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0. So the very last bit we send is a 0, which will shift everything round one and put a blank segment up here, unlit. And we should then display a 4. Hmm. And that's called least significant bit first, right? LSB. Now you can send it most significant bit first. You can start from this end, but of course then you're your pattern, if you like, for the four would have to be very different. So let's let's keep it to the least significant bit first. So we're sending the bit this direction. Hmm, should we do that? I've actually got a little demo board here look, where we can turn uh, bits on and off and just send them down the wire and see what the bit shift register does with it. Hmm, let's try that next. Right, we'll start off with a nice blank display so we can see what's going on. Um, and we'll start sending this stuff then from this end onwards. Now, it's a bit unfortunate that the first one is a zero because then you don't actually see anything. So let's assume, just, just for this little demo, we are going to put the decimal point on here yeah, just so we can see something light up. So what we want then is to send a bit down the line that says, turn that bit on. 
Right. Well, it's it's gone to the A, of course, initially, because that's the first position on the LED where it's got to light up. But that's not its landing position. We want this to shuffle round in this way, in this sequence, all the way through to eventually land on DP, which it will do once we've sent enough bits. So working backwards, then, we're going to go up here. So let's just whiz through those quickly. Look, We're going to go G, F, then we don't want to, so D, uh, e, sorry, and then D. Now B and C. It says P, look, is this going to work? Ta-da! So we now have a 4 with that decimal point because we decided to change that H value to a 1 just so we could see what was going on. And that's the magic of a shift register. It just shuffles the bits along and outputs a particular value on each of its pins that are driving that seven-segment LED. And for us humans, it means that then we can see a value. Woohoo! Marvellous, isn't it? Now, OK, you're saying, I sort of get that, yeah. But um, what if we send another bit now? Is it going to destroy that figure? Well, of course it is, because we send anything through now. Which position is it going to occupy? There's only one place it goes into, and it goes in at the A position. So if we send another one now, it will make this one light up. And the least significant bit, which would be the decimal point, that was the, the first one in, that's going to drop off, really. Yeah. But because we've got two digits on this device, luckily for us, they actually overflow. So as they get shuffled round like this, they get shuffled round into this one in exactly the same way. Which means if you had one, two, four, eight, ten, twelve, it doesn't matter how many digits you have cascaded on here, you can still drive them all with three wires from your Arduino. Amazing. Okay, let's let's think a little bit more about this then. What happens if we want to display 42? We've already got the four, so can we put the two on there? No, you can't. Because Remember, it shuffles the bits around in a particular sequence. So it's shuffled the four on here. But if we were to now put a two on here, the two would end up on this digit and not this one. So we'd have two, four, rather than 42. So you've got to think of the order, the sequence in which you want those digits to appear. And always start with the least significant digit and, in this case, the bits that make up that digit. Let's let's see how we can get 42 on here then. We, we can't start from this position. Let's clear it off and start from fresh. Now, just to speed things up a little bit, I've already done the two for you. Look, the, the two bit pattern requires the segments to be lit in this way. So we want A at the top, then B. We don't want C lit up. We do want D and so on. So I've written it out there as the bit pattern. And once again, the decimal point is off. Uh, which means you don't see anything of the very first bit when we press those buttons. Uh, let's, let's just tap these buttons, though, very quickly to get the two on the first digit. Right, there we are. I'll press the right sequence and we have a two. But now we want the four on the first one and the two on the second one. So if I keep adding bits to this, the HC595 is going to shift those bits onto the next digit and it will work its way around the pattern exactly the way, same way as it did just now. Let's just prove that. There we are, 4-2. So the 2, the pattern of the bit, was shifted over to the rightmost HC595, one bit at a time, and it made the figure 2 appear exactly the same way as it did in the first one, whilst the first digit here was accepting more bits from our Arduino to display eventually the number four. So that's how it works. As each individual bit comes down, it is shifted one place, well, in this case, to the right as it fills up those LED slots. Because the 74HC595 output, the parallel output, all eight pins, are connected to that LED directly, even though the input is by a one serial line. The other two lines on here are clock. So as the data changes, the clock has to change. That tells the 
shift register oh the clock's changed i better go and have a look at what the input now says because that's the value i need to keep but that's fine it will keep putting the value in to its register but when will it actually show the value well it shows it when the third line on here goes high that's called the latch and if the latch goes high and then low that's the trigger to say move the data from your internal memory to the actual output pins now so we can see what's going on now you whilst we were doing this every time i press that bit you could see the digit being formed and sometimes it made some very odd shapes isn't it so you don't really want that to happen you want a whole bytes worth of data to be splatted down and then shown so that the number two or four is immediately shown not the way it's made up and indeed 42 you want two bytes of data to go down first the two then the four and then to say latch and then it will be shown and that's how it works now i have written a couple of sketches that you can download the first sketch is the very one that we used here with these little on off buttons just to show you how you can send an individual bit down the line basically toggle a pin on and off yeah i know basic in the extreme uh, this demo sketch that's running now though uh, does a little bit more um, it sends out first of all the individual segments one by one building them up uh, which you'll see when this little bit ends here here we go there we go let's each each individual segment is built up yeah shows you how to do that very long hand i must admit um, it also shows you this loop that's running now uh, let's just move over to the code window so this is the loop that's running tens of units shows you how we can output those digits without having to do that awful binary conversion we just look at a, a different file basically this char set file um, that i've written just to contain all the individual digits so the pick the number you want and you just put the nth version of this digits out very simple i'll leave all that for you to look at in your own time because it's all well documented i might even document it a little bit more before it goes up into my github so that's uh, where we are with the code um even if we were to leave this as the final result i'd find it onerous to use i have to admit even this sort of stuff here i don't want to do this i just want to say in my arduino code in the future display 23 2c 86 whatever it is just just go and do it yeah don't bother me with all this ls bean digits and shift out and goodness me no so uh, we'll be talking about how we can make this a lot easier in a future video and just going back one step to my own version of this unit yes this one here i really will have to snap these uh, pcb boards off but not just yet um i'm gonna put out a video that shows you how i soldered these on because these are all smd components and i know a lot of you when you think smd you just go not for me not with my eyesight i can't do that i'm too old and doddery or i haven't got the experience or nonsense i tell you nonsense if i can do it with my eyes come on anybody can do it yeah so i'm going to put a little video out how i soldered all this together well we'll do another one actually and um, show you just how easy it is to do now if you've got any comments on this video or indeed the next one what you want to see do put them down below yeah in comments you can say what you would have done differently or perhaps have i got anything wrong surely not wash your mouth out with soap uh, anyway comments down below if i have uh, if you like this video if it was educational you learned a thing or two don't forget put the old yay hey on the uh, on the video yeah youtube like that and i like it as well i appreciate it when people do that and uh, don't forget if you like these sort of videos subscribe and ring the bell yeah as you won't hear from me otherwise you must ring that bell two stage process don't ask me why okay i think that's it for today i'll see you in the next video i hope you're finding these videos useful and interesting there are plenty more videos to choose and a couple are shown below and if you'd like to subscribe to this channel just click on my picture below and enjoy the rest of the videos thanks for watching